Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 65 of the new Build Your Stash and Craft. For this week, we are going to make hand-painted square paper, like 5x5 five five or, or round paper. So, now I have colored coffee filters before. And the one thing is I don't use a lot of round paper and I kind of don't know really what to do with it. But we're gonna just make it into square paper right from the start, um, you know, as soon as after we get it painted. And then for me, looking at a piece of square paper, it's much easier for me to use. So, but really you can keep some round, make some square, you know, do whatever you want to do. But like I said, you know, if you're one of those people like me that you have a hard time um, using or thinking how to even use a round piece of paper, this will help you out. Although round round pieces of paper do look really cute, folded into a journal or, you know, coming off the corner of a, a piece of artwork or whatever. I have water here in this old um, hairspray bottle, and I am just going to wet all of my colors so that when I want to use them, they are already wet. So, all we're going to do is we are just going to take our coffee filter. It doesn't really matter right side up, upside down. The biggest thing is you want to wet it very well. And that takes out all of those little, um, all of those little lines that make it look like a coffee filter. That helps flatten it out. And I just, this is just an old, this is a Walmart bag, um, or Walgreens bag, I think. And, um, so you're just going to, Spray it with water and start putting paint on it. Choose your colors and just, now I've got that very, very wet. Didn't really need to be that wet. And you can just choose to put on however many colors you want to. Remembering that if you are going to um, cut it into squares, it's going to be the center and actually it'll be, you know, like this, that will, this is what will show. So, but I also do, I use the parts that I cut off. I don't just, I don't just use the squares. I find those, the extra bits that I cut off, very nice for collage bits. And I use them to kind of make flowers. Um, I use some just, shortly ago to make some cards and so then I just took another one and put it right on top because that's going to soak up the extra water and the extra paint that is on the one below and I'm just taking some of the color from on my plastic and just rubbing it on to this one now this will be much lighter if I just leave it like this then it will be a very light coloring on, let's separate these and see if I can show you. So this one is a little lighter than this one. So there's just, there's a bit of difference between the two. And then what I do is I just take them, I usually do three at a time. I don't know why, I just do. Um, and so if you have a piece of newspaper, I ran out of newspaper in here, so I'm just going to use this piece of paper, but I just take them and just set them on a piece of paper like this. So these, the wrinkly spots will pick up, um, extra color and those will stay there. Um, the one that's on the bottom, I'll use a couple of these, the one that's on the bottom will... Um, not be as wrinkly as the one, as the second one that you do. So this one winds up flatter. If I can get it to go flat on the paper. And normally I pick it up with two hands and then kind of take it over and Lay it on a piece of newspaper. So, but there we go. Now, actually, look at this. This is really cool right here where it just dragged across my paper. Um, 
So just set them aside like that. And then what I do, because there's still a lot here, is I use one more to just soak that up. So I just put down my coffee filter and use it to pick up those drops. And then once I feel like I have all of that color picked up, then I still spray this because I want to wet it down to get rid of any of those extra little wrinkles that are left, even though it looks like they're all out. And then you wind up with a piece that is very, um, it's very light in color with just a few, it's like speckled, is how you would say it, I guess. And I'm just going to take this one and set it right on top of the other ones that we've done. So now I can um, wipe that off if I want to because it's still going to have some blue on there. Or I can just continue with it like it is and go with something that is a little close in color that it won't matter um, if there's a little blue in it. So we'll go with green's a darker color. So if we have any blue specks, it will kind of cover it up. But then let's go ahead and try and pick up some of this light green. I like to do more than one color. To me, two-toned paper, I, I have a easier time using it than something that's one solid color. Now the thing is, this isn't like super solid because you do get your crinkles and stuff. So that really helps too um, in the way that I look at things. You know, for me, you see here, to use a piece of paper that looks like this, it's very hard for me. Even, you know, like a lot of people say, oh, they have a hard time with a white background. I do too, but I have a hard time with a solid background um, that, that has no texture to it. No, you know, if it's kind of crinkly and has a few lines here and there or something, then I'm okay with it. But if it's just flat color, no variance and no marks or anything, yeah, I just like, I don't like it as well. And I just find this easier to use in the background of anything, whether it's a piece of art, a piece of collage, on a card, on an ATC, um, you know, in a journal, whatever I'm using it for, I just find it easier to have more color. Although I really do like colors that go together very well also. Alrighty, so now we've got those two, and I'm going to separate it, if I can, um, and set it on the paper. But I'm going to set them on top of each other this time, because I don't have a lot of paper here that I want to put it onto. So I'm just going to layer them up like that and then pick up my third color and you can also you know use your your brush if you want to and you don't have to pick your color up with this you can wipe it off with a napkin you know you can do you know do it however you want to I just like to have some pieces that are that just have like the little speckles or just a little bit of color. Um, again, just to break up that solid white color. And so that is how easy this is. It is just so simple and it's easy and it's fast. And so you can do as many of them as you want to. We'll do one more. Let's do some in the reds. So, um, yeah, in the, the very first one, I usually get pretty wet. And again, just play with it. You know, try it with a lot of water. Try it with a little water. Try it with no water. So, um, and these watercolors are very chalky. 
Um, so when this dries, it feels very chalky. Like, see on my hands here, I've got some, well, a lot of that is color that just came from setting them over there, but it's a very um, chalky feeling paint. So um, it has that kind of, I don't know if I want to say texture, it has that feel to it, which is kind of neat. So I'm just going to choose some colors to put together. And that pink is really dry, so I'll just give it a little bit more water. If you spray it at the beginning, if you kind of spray the whole thing, um, it gives it time to, to get um, liquidy, I guess you want, might want to say. Instead of just saying, oh, I think I want some orange now. So getting some water and putting it on the orange. Because then that takes a while um, for that orange to really liquefy up a little bit so it's nice to just have at least have them started by spraying them from the beginning so then I'm just going to put this one on here and this is the last one that I have pulled out so I'm not going to go for a third one in the reds and oranges Give it just a little bit more. Make sure that I get those pressed wrinkles out of there. And there we go. Just take those and put all the blues on one piece of paper. And then see now that's really awesome too. I really, I don't know how well you can see that, but that looks really cool. Just gonna put those on there and let them dry. And so that's really all there is to it. I'm trying to get a piece of paper towel here. There we go. And then you can just let this dry and the, the color will just dry right back down to level. You haven't wasted this because you got it wet. And if you want to, you could put a piece of paper on there and pick some of that color up, but it's not gonna go anywhere. It will stay there. So you haven't ruined it or wasted it. I'm just going to wipe this off. Oh, and now I didn't really think about the fact I didn't make any that are already dry. I mean, I do have some that are already dry, but they're also already cut. So where are my filters? So I'm going to show you, I don't know how well this is going to work, being that it's got all the wrinkles in it. So the way that I turn it into a square is... Well, I'm going to take this one, even though it's a little bit wet. Just take your circle, because because of all of these crinkles, it's not laying flat like this. So take your circle and fold it in half as neatly as you can. Now, some of these are not exactly perfect circles. Like I've got a little overlap here, but there's no gap here, which means that's just the way that it was cut. But fold it in half and then fold it in half again. Now it's important to try and line up these corners right here. Those two corners, line them up nicely. And then you're just gonna take your scissors, hold that together and I'm gonna cut. Now you can draw a line if you want to. Let's see, from this point to this point, we're gonna cut that circle part off and again like I said remember how I said that it's not totally perfect right there so it, you might have a little bit of squareness on your corner or something but it still works really well and this winds up being with this size coffee filter about five by five and then with the bigger coffee filters it's just a little bit bigger so I don't know if you can kind of see 
that didn't write on there real well because this is still wet but so i'm just going to hold that and really you it's easier and better to do it when it's dry but just cut it right straight across there just like that now when you open it up you will have a square and so there we go now we have a square and now you can use that for different things to um to use with a square now this one let's see if we fold it the other way oh that's pretty good so because sometimes it may not wind up being a perfect square because of the if it's out of line a little bit and you don't get your line cut exactly straight but no nope, that lines up pretty good and so there we go now we have a square that we can you know you can do with that whatever you want and you know when you look at them now here's a stick and i keep these i keep all of these because they actually work really well to do other things with but so here's some that i've already made but you know when i look at this you know it's a pile of square paper and to me it's just easier to look at and i don't know why i, I don't know why i get a little confused when i look at round paper but unless it's something like if I'm going to put like a, a doily in my journal, now I could take one of these, fold it in half and stick it in a journal. That doesn't bother me at all. But looking at it and thinking, what can I do with it? Or if I'm looking at it to make something with, um, then I sometimes I just have a hard time looking at that circle thinking that it would work for whatever I'm trying to do. So, but so here are all of my little bits that I cut off of there, off of those. And, um, you know, so you can use them. You can kind of roll them up. Like from the bottom. And just squinch that bottom together as you go. You can kind of roll it, kind of um, pleat it. And then, let's see, I have some stick glue here. A little bit of glue. I don't know if I open it up. I see that even stayed pretty well together. Because I kind of squunched it and pinched it. And so. But because it's it goes from larger to smaller you you have different levels but look at isn't that a cute little flower all on its own and then you could even just add a little more to it so i'm going to start the short side over here by where they're really tall so that this tall part will be more on this other side and then i'm just going to kind of pleat it and twist it around and there is no there's like no magicness to this or anything there's no like pleated every quarter inch or it's just squash it together a little bit and go around and so there we go and if you want to make it bigger you just go with another one And start with that and because it's got more tone to it so then you'll just you know go around even more um but because you've got more tones to the we'll do one more what you painted on there that also looks really good for your flower because you know flowers aren't exactly one color either i mean even if they are like a red flower they still have different hues to them there's nothing that really is like super, I think that's why, you know, I, I have a hard time with it. Because there's nothing that is super, super, you know, you look at the bark on a tree or the leaves on a tree or whatever. None of them are exactly just one color. And 
And so there we go. Now we have this cute little flower. You could put that on a card. You could just make a little bouquet of them and put them in a little tiny vase that you have. They're just really cute. And I really like them. So, um, and so you just don't want to get rid of those. You can even just pleat them up like a little fan. Here is, well, this one's kind of hard to see. It blends in pretty well. But so here's one that's just flat. So that's just a piece of this that's just flat underneath. And I think I cut this end off underneath a piece of cardstock, a little stamped piece of paper. And then right here, a little round kind of um, fanish shape, um, you know, to just kind of complete that little cluster. And, you know, so you can make clusters and then you can use them to, you know, stick. This is just a, a card that I made blank inside. And, um, you know, just make it up with a little envelope with a little bit of um, stenciling on it. And that makes for a really cute card that, you know, you can send to someone that you like. And um, so that is the types of things you can do with those extra little bits. I think that the little flowers are really pretty. I like the little fans. And so like with a square, so we'll just put those up there. And with the square, you could make like little envelopes, origami envelopes, which you just fold it point to point. And then you find your center by, by just pushing just the center. So you just want to line up those points and then find your center here. Okay, so there we go. So now we know that that is our center. So then you can take one point and fold it down to the center and then fold it inside. And put just a touch of glue on it so it just wants to stay there. It's origami, you don't have to do that. You're not supposed to use glue, but I do. Um, okay, so now that's what we've got. And so this is gonna be our top. Now again, where is our center? It's right there. So now we're gonna take this point and fold it about a half an inch past center. And then we're gonna take this point and go about a half an inch past center. And you can do all of this by measuring. So, right about there. If you kind of look at where it's going to fold here, though, if those are in line, you know that you're that they're about right. Okay. So then, this is where I think I'm going to need to move that one over, maybe. And you're going to take this one. Fold down your flap all the way to where you folded it here. These are going to be higher. See, this folded in all the way up to there. And that's okay. We're going to, you can just cut that off right now even. Kind of go up at a little bit of an angle to the line and then right straight down the line. Just to cut off just that little tiny extra bit right there. Just kind of up there and down there. Now, I don't measure these to make sure they're perfect, so mine are never perfect. See, you can even tell by how much was cut off there and how much was cut off there. They're not perfect, and that's totally okay. So now we're just gonna fold these down like that, and now we're gonna bring this flap. That's our envelope right there. So what we're going to do now is we are going to write at the point of our flat of uh, the point of our flap right where that comes down we are going to bend this top one straight back line line up the point at the bottom so this was here like this you're just going to bend it straight back like that okay and then before i go any further i'm going to put a little glue on these little glue just across the bottom and then line up the bottom and with that little point remember we folded that point back that little point folded back so that we don't get glue on it 
go across the bottom like that again like I said you don't have to these these will stay together without gluing them but I, I glue them okay so now we've got that little point that we folded back and what we're going to do is we're going to open it up so there's the point I'm going to open it up like this kind of like a duck bill quack quack and I'm going to push the point of that right up to the point there just like that so basically then it looks like a little diamond now you can and I usually do I kind of pick this side up and put just a little bit of glue not not the quack quack part this is the underside like that so this little part is still open see okay and then this flap fits right into that little diamond so you just take the flap tuck it in there and there we go now you have a little origami envelope if you didn't glue it if you glued it it's probably not an origami envelope but so those are really cute those are things that I, I love to make these with a square I just think that they're really cute and then you have let's see I got a little piece of paper here so you have a little pocket back here just like a regular envelope but then also because we only glued right across the bottom down here there's also a little place that you can put something there and because we didn't actually do these flaps together there's a little tuck spot there and another little tuck spot there so plus the one that goes behind those two because that's two pieces of paper right there so you've got a pocket here and a pocket there I usually just use this one and this one but unless I make them a little bigger and then I use those also but there we go there's a cute little origami envelope that you could make with your squares I really think that those are darling and then we've got little flowers that you can make with your extra bits and again if you take them let's do a purple one And you can just take them and just, um, what do you call that? Kind of, kind of Constantina them. Like that. And then you can just turn them into a little fan which you could put right on the front of your little envelope just like that so but that is our little project for today and again this paper is very um, it's really quite strong and yet it's like tissue paper I don't I don't know how to say that exactly but tissue paper is not quite as strong um, this is very rippable, but it's not going to just, you know, like we did all this folding and gluing and it didn't, when I put the glue stick across it, cause the glue stick is a little sticky. Um, it didn't like grab a hold of the tissue and just rip it. So, um, you know, these are, they're, they're stronger than tissue paper. And so that, that kind of, that kind of makes it much more fun. So, and here's one here where instead of folding, instead of folding this first flap inside, I just left both of them out exactly the same way, except instead of folding this in right at the beginning, I left it just pointed up. And then I only folded this one forward to catch that and left that one standing up straight. And that way there was a pocket back there and again the pocket in here plus the pockets on the side. So which is another another cute way that you could do that. So, and then you've got all of your different colored papers, which really come in handy. And then, you know, you can also, we'll just put them all right on here. This little guy down here. 
You can also have your circles. You don't have to make them into squares. I just thought, because I've tried this before and I didn't like it because I didn't like the circles. I didn't use them. And so I thought, well, that's just kind of a waste. But um, after I really thought about cutting them into squares right from the start, um, I use them a lot more because I just, I like the texture of the paper. And depending on what color, even the, um, the, the really kids chalky paint, um, even gives it another, um, layer of, of texture to it. So, so that's our project for today. Super simple, super easy. You can make a lot of them. You can dry them with your blow dryer or with your heat gun, um, you know, just to make them dry faster. But I don't normally, I, I was always kind of afraid that if I dried it with my heat gun and was moving it around, maybe those crinkles would come back because I really don't like, if I can see these crinkles in there, I know it's a coffee filter and then I won't use it. Like I can't use it because to me it just doesn't seem right to be, you know, on a project or something and it just looks like a coffee filter. So I want to use a coffee filter. I just don't want people to really think it's a coffee filter. So thank you very much for stopping by. If you have any friends that you know that would like these videos, please let them know about my channel. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.